let me read this one too. Super Chicho. Can you talk about the history between Russia and Ukraine? Okay, again. So I'm going to answer this. I'm not going to read the chat uh, in regards to uh, any new questions or anything. I'm just going to uh, stay on focus so I can give you guys a lowdown, really speedy Gonzalez lowdown regarding my take on what's going on in Russia and Ukraine and how this has come to be, right? And Sleepy Waves asks, Chicho, can you talk about the history between Russia and Ukraine? Now, if we're going to talk about history between Russia and Ukraine, it's huge. Uh, there is the, uh, you know, famine uh, during uh, Stalin's time where uh, many Ukrainians were sacrificed uh, to feed Mother Russia and and all that jazz and uh, you know I know about it I don't know the details about it and stuff like this the, well the specifics about it uh, but there's a lot of history there right there's also on the bad front there's also a lot of brotherhood there right so depending on what you decide to focus on you can say there's major conflict and there should be um, collaboration going on right but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to 2008 to really understand what's going on right now okay in terms of why this war has come to be okay in my opinion this is uh, part two or replay okay of what happened between Russia and Georgia okay and i wrote i was following the events there pretty closely between what was going on uh between russia and georgia okay where nato had come out and said oh yes we're gonna uh we're gonna uh we're gonna include georgia into nato and they they were starting to talk about putting weapons in georgia and stuff like this right and russia kept on warning them saying look stop doing what you're doing uh, because this is a threat to us and if you do not stop what you're doing what you're doing then we will have to retaliate okay and this was a build-up just the way it has been a build-up for Ukraine but the Ukraine build-up has been longer okay and this is the piece that I wrote now depending on what browser you're using when you click on that link if you go through Chrome or something it might tell you oh be careful or Firefox or depending it's a legit site it's web uh, archive.org and it's an article that I wrote on my previous blog in 2008 the first part I'm gonna read you a part of this okay and I titled this post World War three expands into Europe and awakens the Russian bear this next stage in the resource wars right now we're 13 years later okay and this is another stage okay this is part two part three part four it's probably part four now because Syria is part of that as well right so that that title that I wrote was World War three expands into Europe and awakens the Russian bear the next stage in the resource wars I'm gonna read you the first little intro part okay and then what I did was link up additional articles that I had written the year before months before to put it all together because it's one really calculus that I've been trying to present when I was blogging a lot of economics and politics okay um, so I'm gonna read you a part of this and 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 Chernobyl of course Joe Chernobyl of course there's so much history between Russia and Ukraine right and I'm gonna link you up uh, to other things as well right but let me read you this part remembering history now remember this was 13 years ago when I had just got into blogging like three years in uh, my writing is could be considered to be dramatic I linked up a lot of sources a lot of these sources probably links are dead because censorship online and whatnot sites go down and whatnot right but this is what I wrote remembering history usually there are uh, disagreements as to the exact dates of the begin beginnings of conflict especially when these conflicts are global which act lit the spark of the tinderbox which straw was the final one like peak oil peak oil itself the beginnings of war are often visible only in retrospect and some of this stuff are uh, sentences or a couple of sentences and stuff that I took out of articles that I had linked in their quotation marks okay so I sort of tried to put a 
collage together with my words putting you know acting as the binding glue right continuing with the article for example some would argue that World War II began in 1939 with the German invasion of Poland. Others would pick the 1931 Japanese invasion of Manchuria or maybe even the 1933 Reichstag fire. The only consensus regarding World War II is that it was devastating. What is happening at the present? Now remember, this is 2008. True to the old proverb, quote, if we don't learn our history, we're doomed to repeat it, end quote. As it was with World War II, so it appears with World War III. Many, including George Bush, believe that 9-11 was the start of World War III. The nominees for this title are plentiful. Afghanistan, Iraq 1, Iraq 2, Syria, Jerusalem, etc. The beginning, the beginning of World War III could, also, could have also been triggered by the establishment of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization or the all opening of Iran's oil burrs, which is hastening the collapse of the US petrodollar. There is also the belief that World War III may be less of an attack on a certain country or a people as it was between, uh, as, it wa as it is a war between corporate governments and their citizenry, Ukraine, Canada. However, if you are still undecided as to the exact start of World War III, given the above choices, then how about picking 8 August 2008 when the war between Russia and Georgia began? This date will surely be considered by many historians to be, be the beginning of World War III since it means that the current wars in Africa and Asia have now spilled over into the European continent. Second segment on this. This is a three-segment thing or four-segment thing. Why Russia and Georgia, Georgia are at war? There are many reasons why Russia and Georgia are at war. But as it was with Afghanistan and Iraq, oil and proposed oil and gas pipelines stand uh, stand out as the primary ones the reason for such a war however are a moot point what is important is who benefits from this who is orchestrating it and what will be the end result the first part is easy the only benefactors of war are corporations as for the second part according to the russian officials quote it was the u.s that orchestrated the current conflict end quote while the georgian minister has personally thanked israel for what is happening and the third the end and the third the end result of such conflict can only bring about the expansion of world war three and everything that it entails what else could possibly be the final outcome when two of the most powerful militaries of the world clash one directly and the other through a client state it should be becoming clear that the implications of what is happening are unfathomable. Should I read you the next one? At the beginning of this year, no, and then I'll, I'll end it there. Those are the main things that were related to Georgia and, uh, and uh, uh, Russia, right? Now, There was a lot more going on here okay what i'm going to take you to is another article that i wrote in 2014 regarding ukraine and russia okay and i was following the events for ukraine and russia pretty in-depthly as well at the time okay and there's so much going on so much going on i did multiple updates to this piece and whatnot but i'm just going to read you uh, uh, read you the main piece I wrote as it was unfolding or as uh, yeah as it was unfolding I, I believe okay and I entitled this piece because this relates to uh, Armenia as well okay so this will give you a picture of what has been happening in former occupied states right on Eastern Europe because Armenia is considered to be part of Europe, right? Eastern Europe in Armenia, Georgia, Ukraine, and has been taking place since the Iron Curtain fell, 
right and it's connected with the verbal agreement that the united states and russia had or at the time ussr had saying that nato would not expand one inch eastward to embrace to encircle russia right so this is a huge game okay that we're witnessing so this is what i titled this article what cold war the co this cold war death follows mccain to the ukraine as the armenian ultimatum to screw over russia fails again for the eu and the us okay let me read that again what cold war this cold war death follows mccain to the ukraine as the armenian ultimatum to screw over russia fails again for the eu and the us the reason that this title is a mouthful because there's so much going on and they're all connected and this is just one of the connections that you can make between what was being offered to armenia and what was being offered to ukraine and how the two decided to go their separate made different decisions right i'm just going to read a little bit from this um okay maybe we'll read the whole thing let's see where it takes us i haven't read this for a while it has become obvious that what's going on in Ukraine is an extension of the Cold War as the US and the EU try and peddle a modified version of modified version of the Armenian ultimatum to their people. Sound complicated? It's not really. What's going on in Ukraine is an economic proxy war that has turned sour. The trade deal that the EU has offered to Ukraine is garbage. To find out how find out how bad it is it is all to find out how bad it is all we have to do is look at why armenia ended up telling the eu to shove it when they tried to jam the same deal down their throats in two th in september 2013 armenia called off a armenian eu association agreement after they found out that the trade deal was not really about easing trade restrictions with the EU, but about screwing over Russia and themselves by extension. And I'm going to read a little excerpt from the article that I linked here. Quote, the apparently smooth progress towards a final deal came to shuddering halt in early September when President Sar Sarez Sargassian met his Russian counterpart Vlad Vladimir Putin and announced plans to join another economic bloc, the Moscow-led Customs Union. Membership of the grouping, which currently includes Russia, Belarus, and Kazakhstan, would require Armenia to adopt the different set of trade tariffs and agreements which EU officials say are not com uh, compatible with the association agreement. Despite this, President Sargas Sargazian says customs union membership would not conflict with the EU accord, which he argues would be uncoupled from the DCFTA. Armenia is ready, ready even now to sign an association agreement with the EU, Sargazian said in a question and answer session after addressing the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe on October 2nd sadly our partners in the european commission have said there is a clear contradiction between the customs union and the agreement on a free trade zone we have suggested that we could sign just the association agreement which mainly covers political reforms there has recently been a lot of talk about the civilization uh, civilizational choice facing members of the eastern partnership initiative we have always stated that we don't believe it's right to view the issue in those terms end quote my wording continues what the eu wanted armenia to do is equivalent to telling someone that they can come over and play at your house as long as they are willing to permanently tell the rest of their family to fuck off insanity as someone who is aware of the history of its people and the region knows the game at play and those involved i can honestly tell you that anyone that is arrogant enough to tell armenians to score over russians for a dangling carrot is one dumb mofo 
After all, everyone knows that what the EU offers hasn't really worked out too well for the citizens of some of its uh, periphery members, such as those in Greece, Spain, Cyprus, Ireland, or Portugal. The main thing we need to know about what's going on in Ukraine is that it's based on our indefinite, uh, based on our in, indefinite growth-based economy. The EU and the US needing to grow to maintain their crony capitalistic system because if they don't, the bubble will pop. This is what the Ukraine deal is about, a self-consuming economic model that must devour everything in its path to maintain power. As for John McCain, death, destruction, and corruption follow him everywhere. So if we're wise, we won't allow the shill to make any more speeches on other people's soil, but instead arrest them for treason in the United States. And then there's a couple of more paragraph here and stuff. Okay. Now, 2008 and 2014. 2008 I wrote the one about Georgia 2014 about Ukraine here's a piece that Scott Ritter has written uh, and it came out February 23rd yesterday okay and you can find it on a global research site and again yeah apologies if I'm not reading chat but just got to get this out because uh, we'll cut this out and put it out on a segment and link up the article so anyone that wants to know what's going on at least our perspective or my perspective can follow the train of thought this is an article that scott ritter wrote on uh, is available on globalresearch.ca and it's available on multiple other sites and if you don't know who scott ritter is you don't know politics you don't know geopolitics you have no idea what has taken place in the world for the last 25 years scott ritter's writing are essential reading okay if you want to understand what has taken place on the geopolitical front in the Middle East and Europe okay for the last 25 years at least at least at least he was a weapons inspector that tried to prevent the United States and the coalition of the willing to uh, in invading Iraq he was the one that said he was in charge of uh, inspecting what for weapons of mass destruction and said came out and said there are no weapons of mass destruction this war is going to be devastating It's for no cause It's for no reason there's no way the United States should go in there and he tried everything he could to stop the war from happening in 2003 the invasion which is really the catalyst that has really sent the world into a tailspin right and he was dismissed from his position and made a pariah okay you need to read this article if you want to know what's going on right now at the present on February 24th 2022 okay and the title of this article is why a war may be the only solution Americans can bring to this conflict what passes for expertise in Russia in the on Russia in the USA today is corrupted by partisan politics which distorts fact-based analysis every American every Western person should read this article I read it this morning and here's an analysis from the Duran and the Duran is doing does fantastic analysis regarding Ukraine they hit and miss regarding certain other parts of the world but regarding Europe sorry uh, specifically in Ukraine Ukraine very focused on uh, Middle East they're very good as well okay so Europe and Middle East they're pretty good okay and this is their analysis of about halfway through this uh, this segment here okay and these are the four pieces that you need to go through mine you know I gave you the gist of it you get a little historical feel uh, if you want to read if you want to spend time reading read Scott Ritter's article and watch the Duran you can skip what uh, what I mentioned uh, my pieces because uh, I read you most of them okay um, aside from that gang I'm going back to the chat apologies if I uh, needed to get that off my chest because I know uh, people are gonna want to know uh, my take and this is the best way I can do it uh, if someone asks me my take I'll just link them up and say this is it 